Welcome to the Mojo Market Report. Here's your hosts, Dave Sturgio and Chris Gucci. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mojo Market Report right here on a Wednesday yeah, hump yeah, day. Yeah. Did you do it too at the same time? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they just said hump day. Anyway, it's Dave Sturgio. It is Chris Gucci. It is A5 behind the glass here at Shop Studios. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Hope you guys are making some money. Hope you guys hit on some of those prop bets last night, the liquid props for the NBA. I know uh, one guy went absolutely ham, and his name is uh, Drew Holiday. Did you watch that game last night? Unreal. Um, um, I, didn't, I didn't watch the entire thing, but I was definitely following it on the tracker game tracker this yes is valentine's day special for me so i had to sure yeah i, had I didn't to, like side eye the, the game the entire time i watched the first half of uh of you the new season of you on netflix wow yeah well wow don't, don't give me that don't. i didn't have to go anywhere <laughs> i ordered takeout so that was nice i had oh, to go to a valentine. restaurant all right all yeah right. that fair, was my fair, thing fair. Was, it was a i thought you were just like elected to watch you and no knowing, no knowing you honestly <laughs> that might have been the first time that Steph got to pick what you guys watched. <laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday right? like, it's Tuesday. I, I give her one day. I give her one. She's like, no, 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 no. You give her one day. You give her about two. Well, now two, that I switched over from from uh, to to YouTube TV, um, I got to figure so things. Happens, I got to figure it some just things so out. Happens that the Knicks did not play yesterday, <laughs> the Knicks, the and the Knicks Rangers did not play. The Rangers yesterday. were off. So um, Steph, congrats. You got the TV. Yeah. So yeah. So we watched you anyway. I also watched Drew, <laughs> Drew Holiday, go absolutely off last night. 40 points, uh, 13 of 21 from the floor. That's a big deal, because, and the reason why I ask this is because I want your opinion on what you think the Milwaukee Bucks can do long-term this season. We're about to hit the All-Star break, which is not really the official midway point of the season. We're already kind of past that 82-game um, season. We're in like to the, almost a 60-game stretch right now. But when you look at... The Bucks and the top seed Celtics. The Celtics have been reeling a little bit, so like I'm kind of curious to know: Do you think there's a, there's much more value behind the one seed? Like, do you think they're focused on getting that one seed, just kind of consistently play good basketball? No, I think everybody would like to get the one seed, and then when you find yourself in a position where it's like a little less attainable, you stop shooting for the one seed. Not everybody is Popovich, where he just really didn't care. Right. It's a matter of, and and sometimes you could make the case that the one seed is worse, depending on who the two or the three is, or the three or the four, mm -hmm. because you could end up getting a tougher matchup right. because the seedings, it doesn't always line up with one, two, three, four being the the best teams in that order. Uh, the Celtics are reeling, man. They're dealing with some injuries and they're starting to pile up. Tatum got ruled out yesterday with a non-COVID illness. We we say reeling, but they are 6 and 4 in their last 10, but like that's not very Celtic like no, no, no. considering their start. No, no, no. the Eastern Conference, depending on who they played, 6 and 4 isn't isn't where you want to be. The Bucks have won 11 in a row. The Bucks are good. The Bucks are a Bucks good are basketball really good team. Really good basketball yeah. team and they I would say maybe they're peaking a little too soon, but peaking in the NBA, it could be a long peak. You know, the yeah. Bucks when you go on a run like the Bucks can, they're a really good team. They got a really good coach. I mean, Giannis is one they of the best have, players in, in some, basketball. They have some continuity there, and, and it's Giannis. Like, this is why when we're talking about the Knicks, and not, not to bring the Knicks into it, but when we were talking about Knicks and the Bucs. Put some I respect think, on my seven seed I Knicks. I think I was, in a, uh, <laughs> I was on a podcast yesterday talking about the Knicks, and I bring up the Let Bucks. Let me guess, and they stink. Yeah, nobody – well, no, it was actually – he was talking, like, extremely good about oh, the wow, Knicks okay. and making it a point where, like, they could make noise in the Eastern Conference – and I said, no, they can't. No, they can't. <laughs> and is is this why? Because when Giannis, Giannis, by the way, goes for thirty six, yeah, so it's not like he had an off day. He had a triple double. Like the East, <laughs> the East is like, all right, the, the Sixers. You're like, ah, eh, you know, the Sixers don't really, but the Sixers completely own the Knicks. So even the teams that you say have some, they have a little bit of, uh, you could see some faults in their what they're able to do. The Sixers dominate the Knicks. They have nobody that's going to stop Embiid. They have nobody that's going to stop uh, Giannis. And now the Nets being gone, I guess helps them. Well, right. you know, it's funny. I was just going to say that. But Within you got the, the East, Pacers, you got the, the Heat. top. Ready for this? This is kind of this just goes to show you how good the East is starting to become. Like, all of a sudden, you know, for years we were making fun of the NFC East as far as being like the NFC least, right? And all of a sudden they turned it up. The, the NBA Eastern Conference right now, the top 10 seeds, I'm looking at the standings right now. There is only one, one team in their past 10 games are under 500 and that's the nets at 4 and 6. Everybody else is 5 and 5 or better. So it's like they're playing good consistent basketball and this is where you have to do it because down the stretch when I used to say that the NBA, you know, I I just said it like a week ago that the regular season was was relatively irrelevant, right? But now you're starting to see that 
It is pretty it's relevant. Like a, it's relevant in the sense of it's a war of attrition. You know, it's not just if, if you made it who's the best team in basketball in a vacuum right now with all the external factors taken away, then you could just crown the champion without playing. Who's the best team on paper? No, you have to get through the rigors of the season, the injuries, the, you know, the, the controversy, the off-the-court stuff. All these things factor into winning a title. That's why it's so hard. It's not, hey, who can win the postseason? Right. No, you got to get to the postseason, stay healthy enough throughout the season, manage all this, the, the personalities in the NBA. However you want to look at it, I think that the regular season in all sports – or what make it. It's like the buildup. Yeah. Uh, back-to-back great games about of Dame time. Dame Lillard goes drops another 39 in his game last night. Kyle Kuzma goes for 33. Kawhi uh-huh, goes for 33 again. Deron Fox goes for 33 as well. A lot of, uh, 35. De'Aaron. So, whatever. Him too. It's spelled Deron on the It paper, is spelled so, Deron. So no, like right gotta, there's like, he left out the... The thingy thing? Yeah, he the left out thing. the... the um, also last night, as far as the NBA is concerned, there was an announcement made for all the skills and the three-point and the dunk contest. Um, they, those guys were announced last night. I'm just going to run through them real quick. Three-point contest. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton, Tyler Hero. Uh, Tyler Hero. Hero. I hate him. Why? I, Oh, I don't like him at all. He's got a very, you know, just he got that really smug. Remember that smug look he gave that a couple years ago? It's just like I, 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 love, I know you like that I love kind of Tyler stuff. Tyler Harrow, buddy healed. I feel like Tyler Harrow could probably be a, a platinum selling rap artist if he so chose to. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's got love that. Tyler. I Harrow. don't know. Let me get Harrow. Through. Not a fan, bro. If um, Tyler Harrow was a Nick. You would <laughs> love him. All right, you would love him. Um, Kevin Hurder. Uh, Huerter, can't. This, this, this is why I need your help. Dame time is in it. Dame time, actually. I'm, I'm, that's who I'll be rooting for to win the three-point oh, contest. Oh, let's go, Dame. Um, Laurie Markkinen, uh, Anthony Simmons is in it, uh, and Jason Tatum. So those are your three-point contest guys. The dunk contest, this is where I was like, what happened? You know, like when I was growing up, when we were growing up, the dunk contest was like the, the must-see. You have to be in front of your TV. No Instagram. None of that crap. You would sit in front of your TV and just go buck wild watching that NBA and dunk contest. I gotta contest. be honest, they were anticlimactic then. That's not true, bro. Bro, if you Vince Carter, I just want to say a couple things. Just the, hanging look, in if, the thing. If you want to cherry pick the best dunk contests of all time, sure. None of them are Vince Carter. None of them are Jason Richardson. And I love both those players. Like when I say I love Vince Carter, top five all time player for me. Jason Richardson, I have always gone on record and said that his dunk contest was better than Vince Carter's. And I'm a big Vince Carter fan. Jason Richardson's dunk contest, that one performance that he had was elite. But the best dunk contest ever was not Dominique and Jordan, where, where they were doing regular windmill dunks, right? Like, you see that on a <laughs> fast Jordan jumped from the free throw you, line. What are you talking you about? You see that in warm-ups now. Ten times better than that in warm-ups. You definitely see those dunks in the, in the game and like Jordan's foul line dunk that he wasn't even behind the foul line. Oh, here we go. Now we're seeing You're a Jordan guy. How dare you say that? We're seeing like I, I think I think I saw John Barry do that dunk. <laughs> all right. We all know who John Barry is, right? <laughs> yes. So John Barry did that dunk 20 years ago. Um, Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon in 2017. I was do remember hands that. Hands down, bar none, far and away, the best dunk contest in history. And it's not even fun. Not even close. I stopped myself. <laughs> it is not even close. All right. And I think if you go back That's and the Google passion it, coming through Chris right now. Guess what? I didn't watch it live. <laughs> I YouTube that one too. And this is what I think the NBA has got down to a science, right? Highlights? I think, well, highlights for sure. <laughs> and this is why the NBA is a star driven league. It's because you don't really even need to watch the games. It's a beautiful thing. I follow the NBA through and through, and I barely sit down and watch an entire game. Unless I have time. And then right now, I mean, I shouldn't say that. Football season's over, so now I will definitely usher in some NBA action. But the NBA, what I'm getting to is they do a really good job of lining up the introduction to the football fans where it's, okay, guys, you haven't been paying attention, and we know, we understand. We love the NFL too. LeBron had something to say about the Super Bowl final. All The, the NBA is, is locked in on the NFL, same way the fans are. But then the Super Bowl ends – And then we got like three or four good matchups leading up to All-Star break. And then for all the fans out there that haven't really been paying too much attention, looking from, you know, afar, we get All-Star weekend and say, hey, guys, did you did you not know any of these guys existed? Because here they are. They're all stars. And now here's your introduction (laughs) to the new breed of the NBA All-Stars, because it seems like there's five new ones every year. 
And I think it's a perfect situation. I might actually sit down and watch this boring skills contest this weekend, the, just so I could get the Giannis brothers. Fully, I say Giannis because you fully forget, enthralled to the NBA forget action. Forget trying to say his whole last name, uh, but like him and his brother in the skills competition again. Sure. Um, but yeah, the dunk contest. KJ Martin, Mac McClung, Trey Murphy to third, and my guy. Jericho Sims. I hope he wins it. Obviously, New York Knicks. Um, excited about that. But four guys, four mm, better off, and they're all going to get tens from the judges. Every dunk, ten. Like it's just like, you know, it, it's lost its luster over the years. I think. Sure. Will somebody one day do something there's so chance, ridiculous where you're like that? One of these four guys that nobody has ever heard of is a star at the end of the night. Yeah, so that's of course cool. because he's going to be all over. Instagram and, yeah, and stuff like he'll that. He'll be the new Gerald Green. He'll average three and three or three <laughs> and I, I three points, three minutes, zero rebounds, zero assists. Oh my god! All right, well that's the NBA. There's a like I said, a big slate of games last night. We'll talk about a couple of the games going into tonight. Uh, obviously, the liquid props, career bets, everything coming to Mojo. Uh, very excited about that. But of course, you know this is a a. A NFL driven show because this is where we started and this is where we continue to go. <clears throat> Yesterday, the NFC champions, the guys that lost the Super Bowl, the Philadelphia Eagles, not only lost the Super Bowl, but now have officially lost both of their coordinators. Both guys are out. Um, Shane Steichen to the Colts, and of course, Jonathan Gannon, the defensive coordinator to the Cardinals. Now, I took kind of like a brief poll last night with within our Chop Sports community. And a lot of the Eagles fans just, they attacked me right away saying, we wanted Gannon out of there. Defensive coordinator, get him out of there. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, you guys had a, had a great year. Defensively, too. You cannot take away. Then they were nitpicking and cherry picking. Well, Dallas hung 40 on him. Detroit hung 35. This guy hung third. Like, that happens in the NFL. You're a Super Bowl team, and you lost both coordinators. This is significant. I would I think. say that there's Eagle fans that you, the, the few that you may have spoken to, could say, okay, we wanted him out of there. That's not true. That can't be true. Even if it's true, um, it's not necessarily the right move. You know, that's why you're, you're, you're you and the GM is the GM who's managed to build a, su a Super Bowl contender that's mm. seemingly going to be there next year and the year after the way their, their roster is set up. Not the Super Bowl, but contender. Sure. Um, Look, I think that there's a there's the writing is on the wall as to who the next DC in Philly will be based on the fact that he had a two week audition and it didn't necessarily work out for him. But Vic Fangio will most likely be. You're already hired. He's the hired by Denver. Dolphins. Dolphins. Yes. So what the heck was that? Exactly. That confused the hell out of everybody. There was no right. Like I was confused by it to begin with, but then I'm when I saw the news yesterday that the DC got hired, I was like, all right, it makes a little bit of sense. Usher him in. This I did not know. Yes. Um, so Fangio so, out. He was there as a oh. consultant for two weeks and ruined everything. Because oh, look man. at the defense of what happened. And yeah. then it cost Gannon his job. I don't want to say it cost him his job I mean, because the, hired, the hired, Cardinals and the Colts got their guy. Now, I ask you, Chris, who's got the better job right now? Steichen with the Colts or Gannon with the Cardinals? Probably Eric Bieniemy with the Chiefs <laughs> as the OC. This is a multiple choice, <laughs> and Bieniemy is not in this I, conversation. I still think, and I'm, I'm not. I'm going to answer your question but eventually. Then I'm going to get to the Eric Bieniemy or All Andy right. Reid thing. Um, I think the Colts' job is better. I would say so too. I think that the Colts' job is better here, outside here. the fact that they don't have a quarterback. Well, but, neither do the Cardinals. But the, the Cardinals do for the first half of the season. They might. That's not. fair. That's fine. So in a sense. You're almost in a better spot getting that because you're less likely to be fired in year one. There's your the there's your job. there's your scapegoat. And they're yeah. probably not going to get fired in year one anyway. Yeah, it's not Urban Meyer. But you get a little bit stretch. longer of a leash when you have the the injury situation to QB. And look, one from everything that we've heard about the Cardinals, it's not fun times over there right no. now. It's just the defense no. stinks. Like they, the, they just the all Hopkins Hopkins stink. thing is about to materialize before the draft. I would imagine. Um, you think he gets moved? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. He's wow. getting moved. And the problem with the Hopkins Dallas. deal is that the team that trades for him is going to have to sign a massive deal. Mm, maybe not Dallas. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> because he's on, he's looking for money now. He's only making 16. Hopkins was the highest paid three years ago. And then that class. You see just how fast that market that. shifts like that. He's not going to reset the market again. He, nor should he. Um, but he's, he's going to no, get. Nor should he. And I still think that DeAndre Hopkins with the right quarterback 
could still be a top three receiver in this game. You still the think two he don't can. drop balls. I'm sure. I'm sure he still thinks he can. But I can guarantee you, I know a bunch of people, maybe 32 people, that collectively agree that he can't. And that'll be NFL execs. He's on the wrong side of 30. If he's not, he's damn close at this point. And you're not giving out a massive deal to a receiver at that age with the a injury, slight injury history over the last year, and he had the steroid issue, which we don't know if it was a real steroid issue or not. But yeah, I'm not giving DeAndre Hopkins top dollar. Okay. I'll give him top five dollar, but I'm not resetting the market with Hopkins. When no, you Jamar can't. Chase, a Justin Jefferson, you the world. you're not paying him that money. Um, no way. I got to ask you this. So Colts got the better deal here. Colts got the better, or better deal because or I he think got they, the better I think job. They have a better system in place, offensively, defensively, up front now, than the Cardinals do. Rank them. Five coaches filled five vacancies. Here they are. We just talked about Steichen over to the Colts. We just talked about Gannon to the Cardinals. The other three head coaches, D'Amico Ryans to the Texans, Sean Payton to the Broncos, and Frank Reich to the Panthers. Who, by the way, Frank Reich stole Deuce Staley away from Detroit. He is now the assistant head coach, running backs coach in Carolina, which is interesting. Um, But out of those five, is it by default Sean Payton's the best hire because of the name value? Who's got the best? Who hired the best coach out of the vacancies? I mean, I, I think Sean Payton might be the worst hire out of all of them. Really? And because of what it costs you to get him. This and is true. There's no, like the only way that that works out is not just, you know, if they're decent. The Broncos haven't been a terrible team, they've had success. So, you know, I, I also think that Sean Payton and Russ are going to butt heads. It's going to get worse before it gets better there. That's my opinion on that situation. So, no to Sean Payton. I like all, I'm all about the new blood. So, I like the Frank Reich hire because I think he is still somewhat new blood in terms of head coaching goes. Uh, I don't know much about the other guys. So are you asking me which job is the best or which team did the best with the coaching? Search? Which team had the best hire? I would say Frank Reich to is the, the Panthers. best hire. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, and I happen to agree with you after all of these. I love the D'Amico Ryans move in, in Houston. I, I just do. Need to, I, but that that locker room, that 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 just the whole roster I think just it's a good sucks. hire for them like, as well because I'm pretty sure there's a history him, with him as a player yes, in yes. Houston. So it Welcome makes home, sense. Welcome home, They yep. love D'Amico Ryans over there. Um, I don't know if anybody, former player, loves the Texans. <laughs> Maybe J.J. Watt because... Harry Foster definitely loves the Texans. Um, but, yeah, so I, I agree with you. Frank Reich, I think, is the best hire um, running back situation. You know, they got a couple guys to choose from. The receivers, you have a young D.J. Moore who was on the block, but maybe that's resurrected. They are also in the quarterback market. Um, so now all of a sudden, you saw what happened yesterday, obviously. Is there any team now that's still looking for a head coach? No, they've all everybody's made their hired their guy and unless I'm really omitting somebody, but I really think everybody's set. So now we're looking at, you know, Andy Reid says he's coming back. Um, I feel like there's been a lot to a lot of uh, talk about the Eric B situation. Rightfully so. Eric Bieniemy has been a candidate to be a head coach for what feels like a decade. Now, I understand he's taken some interviews and he hasn't gotten jobs, but it's also to my understanding that last year he pulled himself out of runnings for jobs that he may have been considering. I think for. he thinks he's just going to slide into exactly. the KC. Like job. if I'm if I'm Bieniemy and he's looking at Andy Reid has had a ton of success in this league, he has a really almost a guaranteed job if Andy Reid does retire, which it's not going to be this year. But what's the worst that could happen is that you collect you collect Super Bowl rings or or you know playoff well, think experience about it. along think about, the way. Think about what he's dealing with right now. You look at a guy like Eric Bieniemy, and even if Andy Reid, let's just say for instance, goes two more years and then decides, you know what, I'm done. You look at the Patrick Mahomes contract, and you still have Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback for the next five after that. With what looks <laughs> so like, like it's a lot looks of time. like a willingness out of Mahomes to to make the roster work when he needs to. He and, will. And honestly, similarly. But as much as I want to talk about Kelsey in a bad light, I guarantee you that he's willing to restructure and do the same. 100%. And you know what? You say, like, oh, you know, when push comes to shove, it'll be time for him to renegotiate because they got to surround. Look what happened this year. He didn't have anybody. He didn't have to. He, he made those stars. He turned into Tom Brady. Actually, you know what's funny? Our, uh, our colleague, uh, Rob, Rasslin Rob, uh, sent me something yesterday, which was very interesting. At the age of 27, a comparison between. Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. Um, by the age of 27, Tom Brady had two rings, two Pro Bowls, two Super Bowl MVPs, 97 touchdowns, 13,000 yards, and 52 interceptions. Are, are you going to show me like the stats? Mahomes, like Mahomes stats wipes the floor fair. with Tom Brady's Tom stats. Tom Brady didn't play Same thing, two either. rings, two Super Bowl MVPs, two league MVPs, two team All-Pros, 109... 
over 24,000 yards. You almost doubled Brady in yards. There is the, the, yard, the yards I don't care about. I mean, yes, it's a, it's I a really passing don't. league. I Everybody. have a hard time accepting that as, like, why he was better. Brady was just as good, if not better, than Mahomes in that spot. But I'm just looking you know, at your, the different trajectory league, purposes. 100% do you think that that's a? Do you think we're going to be stuck in this new thing but, where it went from Brady and now it's going to be Mahomes for the next 20? Yeah. I do. Right? Are we I mean, stuck? like, for sure. And Burrow and, yeah, like, Burrow is going to be there. But, like, will Burrow games. always be the Peyton Manning? Potentially. Yeah. But, no, because Burrow beat Fine, Mahomes but right never, out of the gate, but, which it took but, Manning it, ye- a decade. But Super Bowl rings, Mahomes is Brady right now. So, if you look, if, if you want to if you want to <laughs> compare the two, I think it's a great conversation to have. Yeah, um, Mahomes is your Brady to Burrow is your Peyton Manning. But, and then you have the other guys that have surrounded the league and in, 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 it'll be your Drew Justin Herbert, Josh Allen's and things like right, that. Of right, right. Um, it's kind of crazy how history is repeating itself. When's the, when are the Cowboys going to get one of these guys? <laughs> Uh, just to compare the Mahomes and the Brady thing, I mean, Tom Brady, in those early years, his receivers, nobody, like Troy Brown. Even I mean, if that 07, he had Moss, and they said think about his first Super Bowl. Name right. him. Name him. You, who, pff, Troy Brown, who by the way, I believe played both sides of the ball that corner. year. <laughs> you know, right. so it was a different, way different league. Um, the greatest show on turf was setting all these offensive records. Now the greatest show on turf would be. I wouldn't say run of the mill because they were a really good offense. And if they got to play in this rule set, oh my goodness. But if you took those stats compared to now, that's like basically the the Saints for the last 10 years. Just to give you an idea, 2002 wide receivers for Tom Brady, Deion Branch, Troy Brown, Fred Coleman. <laughs> it's like, what? Tyreek Hill, <laughs> Travis Kelsey. <laughs> You know, they didn't have Gronk yet. And you he had, had Andy. He Reed. had Fred Baxter. And then you had Andy Reid, and there's no disrespect to Belichick, but Andy Reid's offense is much better than anything the Patriots are putting together at any point, at any point, mm. outside of the Moss year. Interesting. And very, then, very interesting. Hey, by any chance, and Ant, you could flip us back over. Um, by any chance, did you buy? <laughs> did you see the Juju and AJ Brown stuff? Yeah, Juju's a dork. <laughs> Like, I was starting to come around on Juju. Not anymore. Like, for, like he was he he shared out that Valentine thing, the Valentine meme about I'll hold you when it matters the most when it came to Bradbury, right? And I, like AJ Brown went in it made, hard it, in the it paint. Made, it, Juju's tweet made zero sense, none whatsoever. It's just it makes me not like you. It's a joke, first of all. Well, the first it's, it's in bad taste. It's in bad taste. Look, I could see if Bradbury was talking reckless. Bradbury took that like a man. He like did. He, he did. I, I, I'm gonna say this: the Eagles. I might have said it yesterday. The Eagles fans, we all agree, they're like, ah, ah, shut up already. <laughs> but the Eagles players have shut up immediately. They didn't say one word about we got robbed. The the call was bad. They owned it like you would want your players to own it. So Truth. I give them respect for that. Truth. Um, and Juju, I don't know why you're, you know, like what, what are you poking fun at? Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy AJ your dog. Brown. AJ Brown said you were, you were just about to be out of the league until Patrick Mahomes reinvent, like revigor, Honestly, invigorate your career. It's not, he's not right. He wasn't out of the league, but he goes, league. enjoy, enjoy that one year contract. <laughs> He went in on him, dude. And I was very excited to see it. And I'm listen, I am anti-Eagle everything. But when I saw AJ Brown, I was like, can't find the lie and then here. Juju's <laughs> like, oh, it's fine. It's, I'm happy you were able to get that off your chest after all these years. So I guess they like obviously know each other. Patrick Mahomes subtweeted. He's like, man, that, that man must just be bored, right? Talking about AJ Brown. And AJ Brown retweeted that. He goes, Oh, I'm glad I was told on. <laughs> Like, dude, the whole thing was great. Drama, drama, drama. Gotta love it. Um, you know who said nothing? Bradbury. Correct. Except for I held. <laughs> so that's a thing. Um, I, I ass whooping coming your way, Juju. Come, yeah, Bradbury, right? CG. Brad, yeah, Bradbury's going to knock you out, dude. Um, all right. One more thing, obviously, before we get out of here, before we get to the NBA liquid props and the games in the slate tonight, NFL-related, Derek Carr officially released as of yesterday. We knew it was going to happen. It happened like two hours after we went off the air. It's usually how things happen around here. Uh, but, yes, Derek Carr is officially a free agent. He can sign wherever he wants. My assumption is, and maybe you can agree with me, disagree with me, does something get done this week, or is, is he play the Derek Carr goes on a world tour game and he just kind of <laughs> sees a million teams? Do you think he actually has? We talked about it yesterday as a, as a comedic thing, a comedic piece during the show about how him and the Saints already have like almost like an agreement, just wait till I'm cut, then sign me for nothing, or a.k.a. 
no well, compensation. I mean, uh, is the Saints the player, or is he going somewhere else? I think he he owes it to himself to go talk to everybody, and sure. I think he'll do that. And he'll because there's a process that goes into free agency, and not everybody abides by this because some guys just know where they want to go and they decide, and that's it, and they don't care. This feels right. This is where we're going. My mom told me I'm going here, type thing, right? So it's <laughs> right. like we're going there. Um, but Derek Carr seems like the type of guy that's going to do things with the utmost professionalism, and there's teams that might be interested in him, and he feels like they have the right to be heard. And I don't know, I'm not speaking on his personality, or his, but that just seems the type of character guy that he is. So he's going to say, hey, Saints, I'm, I really like this deal, but I owe it to – Myself was and the, Shark Tank. <laughs> like I really like your offer, but I like to hear what everybody 100%, else. One hundred percent. You have one chance here. Dude. Yeah. You know, you have one chance. You got to hear it all out. Uh, that's my opinion. Sounds like the start of a, a eight mile soundtrack. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> Detroit. <clears throat> Detroit's listen, not in on a quarterback. But. <laughs> really not. My long shot. I don't feel like it's too long. Commanders. No. No. Oh God. No. God. No. They will never. They would never. They would never. All right. My I mean, long shot. Would. They, they just would paid never. Carson Wentz. Exactly million, why they would so never. They, they would definitely pay Derek Carr for you. You got to cut Wentz. You got to cut Wentz. Like they're, they're going to be in so much dead Did cap hell for He's still on a team. Right. Jeez. I, it was. I was ten eight years old when I realized that Rivera lasted the entire thing. <laughs> How did that happen? The guy didn't even know they missed the playoffs, and he's still a coach. But anyway, Ron Rivera, great guy. But my long shot, great story. My long shot for Derek Carr. Where you have the Jets, you have the Saints, you have the Colts. I think he goes with Frank Reich in Carolina. I feel like that's a great relationship. And this is, listen, I'm not about to preach this, but both guys, very, very religious guys. I know this has nothing to do with nothing, but very, very, like, in touch with their Christianity. I know it sounds ridiculous, but imagine sitting down in front of Frank Reich, and they're like... How do you want to negotiate one, this? And he's like, thing, well, if according one, to John 316. Well, if there's <laughs> one thing, serious, he'll though. be like, he'll be like, oh, I'm gonna go there for the Christianity. And then Frank Reich gets fired in week eight. And Derek Carr's like, well, what the heck is going on over here? I brought Devontae got What and I Sam get Heck? Yeah. <laughs> I know it Sheepers. sounds stupid, but I, I believe in a coach quarterback relationship. And I think if there's a common bond there, why do you think why do you think him and Carson Wentz got along? That's the truth. They were very, very close because they were very, very similar in mindsets. Swear to God. That sort Do you think they got along up until the point where he, he said, we're going to trade you? <laughs> that wasn't his decision. That was not his decision at all. Um, I may love the, may the Lord be with you. <laughs> yeah. Good luck on all your ventures. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that that's my long shot for Derek Carr. There is actually a big quarterback I still market. I say the Saints. You say the Saints. We'll touch more on all of these quarterbacks tomorrow uh, because I definitely want to dive deeper into the quarterback market of where guys can go because at the end of this week, according to what we finally found out yesterday, is that Aaron Rodgers goes on his darkness retreat starting at the end of the week. He goes to his bed and breakfast. Dark. Uh, slipped under the door. Where's a diaper um, is what I'm hearing too. So... It's your boy. <laughs> it's my boy. I still can't get over this. I, I'm just like, Bro, I'm blown away. Just, that this just is so news. Just so we're clear, right? You know, I, I, kudos to him though for, for yesterday saying, "I have an inner circle." Okay, Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport are not in are not in my inner circle. Yeah. So if they're saying anything. They're lying. <laughs> so, yes. like, when, when uh, Schefter was like, it's short, she's upset that Aaron Rodgers will go dark on Monday. And I'm just like, and he's like, I'm on the McAfee show on Tuesday. So, therefore, you're wrong, Schefter. <laughs> you know and, what I'm saying? And now, so, to the point of what you're saying, even the McAfee show is now guilty, guilty of twisting words because of the way they clipped up that Rodgers segment. You know who's Makes awesome? it seem like Aaron Rodgers was going to use this darkness to, like, contemplate Jordan Love's future. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and what, the Packer fans are hanging on the edge. No, like Aaron Rodgers is literally going to do what he wants to do as almost zero to do with football. I can almost guarantee it. It's like put that away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Turn your phone off, all that. So, yeah, definitely. And, and I, listen, I am wholeheartedly for a mental break from the world. I am for that. How he's going about doing it, how he's explaining how this is going to go is the weird part. No, That's no, the only no, thing no. I'm saying. It's, it's, the reason why it's weird is because it's it's not – Something that is pushed in society. Well, maybe if he should. Everyone was do. If it was like the common thing, everyone go lay, lay in the dark for two days, and you, you'll get these crazy benefits. And everyone was doing it. But well, it's the, just I like intermittent you, fasting. It's just like any of these other trends. Like that's also weird. 
Really, what, not like, to eat? eat. Eat for four hours today, and that's it. <laughs> but you're gonna have so much more energy, and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> I feel like I'm emaciated over here. Um, yeah, no, UFC guys do it all the time, and it's like, you know, they're focused, they're hyper focused. It's like they this camp was great. They secluded themselves in the ice and snow and darkness, and it's like a of benefit. Aaron Rodgers did ayahuasca. It didn't come out until after the fact, right? So yeah. now that there's news that like this is the type of guy he is, now it's all going to start coming out before the fact. And he's going to have fun with it because guess what? They're not in his inner circle, and he plays with it. I he would. does. He's having fun with it, I think. There's not a great relationship between Aaron Rodgers and the media. We've known that for a long time. So yeah. anything you hear, take with a grain of salt. So sorry. Unless you hear it from me. Sorry, inner circle people. You are out. A.J. Hawk is definitely in the inner circle. So that's why and I feel why like. the reason A.J. Hawk's in the inner circle is because he has a platform and says nothing. This is true. Everything. And Pat Shout McAfee, out to A.J. Hawk for holding it together. And Pat McAfee even knows more. He knows the answers to these questions because he's boys with A.J. Hawk, who's boys with Aaron Rodgers, who they're all boys together. So they get on their little three-way messaging, and they all know what's going on, but A.J. Hawk and Pat McAfee say nothing. And that's why Rodgers goes and talks to them. And that. That, and that's, that's the way the, the inner cookie circle. crumbles. All right. Anyway, we got some NBA liquid props before we get out of here. Real quick, there's a couple. Um, there's one game I want you guys to focus in on tonight, and that is the Knicks playing the Atlanta Hawks, 7:30 tonight. Uh, take a look at Brunson again. He's had himself a couple Where is solid the game? games. The game's in Atlanta, so that's why. I, so Trey Young shouldn't have 50 then, because if it was in the Garden, then he would. Yeah, exactly. Is Trey so, Young even playing? I don't who know. knows? <laughs> the, the load management stuff is crazy, but the All Star break is right here. So tomorrow there's three games on the docket, and then they go on their All Star break uh, for the weekend. So. Look at the Knicks game tonight. Um, get involved in uh, Jalen Brunson. And, um, I mean, look, it's a loaded slate. I mean, the Lakers play at the end of the night. They play the, the Pelicans. Yeah, I think around. The like, Mavericks are back against Denver. Right after market open, I think the liquid props will pop up. So, yes. as of right now, we, we would like to be able to tell you where to go. But we're going to have to trust that you guys know what you're talking about. And we know what we're talking about yeah. every day. But we just don't know what the props are going to be. No, we don't. Uh, we know who. We don't know what. So th they set those lines. Those are the you know very interesting things to keep your eye on. So do us a favor also. Follow us on social media right now. Uh, do yourself that favor. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter is where to find us. M-O-J-O -O at Mojo. Join the Discord every day. Conversation. I don't know if you guys have seen this new app. Um, or I say redone app. If you go to the app right now. It is instead of seeing Tom Brady's mug, you see LeBron James's mug now on the phone. So they, they are making the shift. The shift is happening. NBA is here. We are knee deep in it. So continue to follow us. Continue to support the show. We appreciate it very much. For Dave Sturchio, Chris Gucci, A5, Anthony Behind the Glass right here at Chop Studios. This has been another episode of the Mojo Market Report back here on a Thursday.